Guilty Gear Strive. This game has been going three years strong for three seasons, bringing in new things every time. And with the fourth season already confirmed in development, let's see what we can expect from season four. And we're allowed to have big expectations, like how in season one they allowed us to RC mid throw animation and they also gave us new air gatlings. In season two, we got the FRC cost rework, dash cancels, FD button, small counter hit slowdowns, and crossplay. And of course, in season three, we got full screen bursts, thanks Happy Chaos, the flex shield, and wild assault. And that's not counting all the cool new characters and stages we got. And in season four, we're gonna get a whole lot more, including a new game mode and a whole ass TV anime. We're gonna get to all that in this video. So let's start here. DLC characters. I was 3 for 4 in Season 3. Let's see if we can go 4 for 4 and 4. Let's get the obvious out of the way. This new anime character, she's obviously gonna be DLC. And for my second pick, I'm gonna be stubborn and stick with Gabriel here. I know the chances are quite low, but I believe. Not really. And now, here's where we gotta make a choice. We still got Dizzy, Jam, Zappa, and Kuhn. I think Jam's gonna get in instead of Dizzy, mostly because of lore reasons. And Zappa never did get cured but he's definitely less possessed and is working a job in Illyria. So Kuhn takes his place by default. I need some projectile manipulation in Strife. So right now, the best bet for DLC is Unica, Gabriel, Kuhn, and Jam. And I think Unica is gonna be revealed last to line up with the anime release, and Jam is gonna be revealed first. But we got until November before we see Jam, so in the meantime, we can play with Jam at home. For stages, we've usually always gotten only two per season. So I'll say maybe we'll get a new stage from the anime, I hope. And a stage I personally want in Strive is the Japan stage from Exert. That backdrop of the massive hole that Justice made is crazy, and I definitely want to see that in Strive's graphics. You saw what it did with the tutorial stage. They can cook. An honorable mention would be the moving train in the Another Story expansion. Kinda similar to the train stage in Exert again. Now for balance, we got three topics. New special moves, system changes, and new system mechanics. We'll get the latter out of the way first. We just got two new system mechanics and a few system changes, so I doubt we'll see any new mechanic, but if we do get one, you already know what I'm gonna say. Give us insta-kills. It's been three years, going on four, and we don't have the staple signature of Guilty Gear in Strive yet. But also the belt, I don't care. Anyway, on to new special moves. Chip? Give him his teleports back. We got characters like Nago and Slayer One's happiness. We've got to fight back somehow. The ability to choose between fast and slow shuriken by holding the button wouldn't be bad either. Now, so bad guy. He has the most special moves in the game, so I don't know what they might give him. My best guess is Sidewinder. For Kai, he doesn't have as much special moves as Soul, but he is really well rounded. So fuck it, give him grinders again. And the idea of Leo getting more special moves kinda scares me but he could get his aerial ground slam again. Now, Zato won. I don't know if they can give him dead man's hand because of deflect shield, but I guess they could give him an eddy command and dust. It could be either of his overheads and plus R, or the landmine drill, whatever your taste is. Now, Nago scares me just as much as Leo, but I kinda have a cool idea. Give him a special that vacuums for a guaranteed strike throw situation. Oh wait, that's just Slayer's 2S. Hmm. Make it cost over a bar of blood, and you can't cancel into any of the specials. That seems fair. We don't know if they'll go into any new DLC, but for now, that's unfortunately a no. Now for the system changes. They did release a new developer backyard, talking about a minor balance change to buff weaker characters, and a major one to balance the whole cast. And what I really want from the patch, in terms of system changes, touch up on White's Wild Assault, please. I think it should be slower, because right now, it's a jump skip. You can't do anything about it unless it's a read, and no one is reacting to that in match. And for Wild Assault in general, make it so that you have to charge it before you can drain somebody's burst and block. Because especially with White, you can't really interact with it. It's in vault, so you can't check it. And it guard crushes, so you can't even YRC. So if they go for the fast one, we can burst after, and if they go for the slower charged one, we can react. Now, Deflect Shield is already in a really good place. If there's anything I'd like to add, maybe refund some bursts, like maybe 5% after a successful Deflect Shield. Apart from that, I really don't know what else to add to it. And speaking of bursts, now that it's full screen, thanks again, Happy Chaos, the only way to beta burst is if you block it. But just bring burst throws back. I mean, it was on a closed beta before in 2019. <laughs> Why not now? And of course, I've got to ask for the obligatory, reduce the damn damage. Yes, I'm a chip main. Yes, I'm biased, but it's still too freaking much. Now, one of the updates I'm really excited for is the new 3v3 game mode, which was announced nearly a year ago. But the producer and director of Strive recently had an interview that was uploaded to YouTube on the EVO FGC channel. And amongst other things, they talked about the new 3v3 game mode. 
We all expected something like a KOF or a Marvel type game, but there's sufficient info to suggest that's not the case. You see, we've had a team game mode in the Guilty Gear franchise before, and of course I'm talking about Guilty Gear Isuka, the 4 player team slash free for all fighting game. And this game was referenced in the interview, stating that it's gonna have a similar concept to Isuka, but it's gonna be more team focused, meaning that this 3v3 mode isn't an assist or tag mode at all. It's gonna be 6 separate players online on the same screen, fighting at the same time. At least that's my best guess. So it's gonna be more multiverses rather than Smash Bros, but instead of Percentages, it's gonna be health bars. They did confirm that as well. Now, my worry is how? I mean, I can get having three characters on screen like an arcade, heck, maybe even four like an Isuka, but six whole characters on that small ass screen? Imagine a game with these characters. To be fair, visual clarity isn't all that important in a fun casual game mode, and they have been planning this mode for a long time, even before 2xKO became a team game. So they've definitely figured out how the game is gonna play. And speaking of gameplay, I can imagine it's gonna be similar to Iska in that regard as well, like having a dedicated button to turn your character to face the other way, the ability to switch lanes, and having stalks instead of rounds. But hopefully there's an actual dust button this time and not a button combination. And finally, the TV anime. Looking at the teaser, it looks really good. We already had an idea of what we are gonna get from the anniversary AMV, which was made by the same studio as the anime, Studio Sans again. But I wasn't sure if they were gonna go 2D, 3D, or hybrid, cause they've done all three. But regardless of medium, we're gonna be in good hands. I mean, these are the same guys that made Arsene Sankey. And that was fully 2D. We still got the previously mentioned AMV, and of course, the critically acclaimed d 4 d first mix. As for the story, it's basically gonna be a new arc after the events of Strive, cause, oh, spoiler for Strive story by the way. In Soul's character bio, they mentioned that he lost his gear powers in the prior incident, which is exactly what happened at the end of Strive. And now, instead of facing happy chaos, there's a new threat. A mysterious girl that came out of nowhere and vowed to destroy every single gear in the world. Her name is Yunika, and we don't know how strong she is, but we can judge from how she's keeping up with Sin in the teaser, she's up there. But if her goal is to kill all gears, do you know who else is a gear? The first king of Illyria. And his wife. She's effectively waging war on the entire country of Illyria. Similarly to how the original Valentine did when she set up the Baptisma 13 event in Guilty Gear Overture. And just like in Overture, Sin and Soul take center stage. If I had a nickel for every time a woman attacked Illyria with an interest in killing and or capturing all gears, I'd have two nickels, but it's weird that it happened more than once. Also, why are all the main antagonists of Guilty Gear all female? Anyway, I hope more Overture references are made, like with the whole Soul Sinker thing, as well as some returning characters like Raven or Izuna. <gasps> Wait a minute. I like teleports more than projectiles. Happy Chaos could have a part to play too, maybe this time on the good guy side, because he is technically neutral. But it's all speculation. We're just gonna wait until the episodes come out. We're gonna be a reaction channel part time. And if this video gets, I don't know, 250 likes, I'll do the entire season. And hit the sub button while you're at it. Anyway, that's it. See ya. Faster, faster, dear. It's like